make it uh, record the entire way. Okay, so that's recording. Uh, so like I said again, Google, search for a car. It could be any car. Uh, some students don't know names of cars. Just type in car. See what pops up. There we go. You'll see a lot of futuristic cars, and a lot of these tend to be uh, artistic renderings. So that means like kind of drawings. I would always tell students, try to stick with an actual uh, picture of a car. Um, so for example, I'll try this one. Oh, but I didn't go to a large. Oh, it is large right now. So made sure it was large. Um, you could just click on view image and it should take you to a page like this and there was a little plus button. I clicked on the plus. Now I know that this is full size. Okay, so I'm just going to right click on it. Save image as. That way I can rename it. I'm going to name it uh, just Audi or you know what, car. And I'm going to put that on my desktop. Really important to know where you're saving on a Mac because Typically, it will always want to save into your documents folder, and I find sometimes that can be confusing if you're not used to a Mac. I always love to save things right to my desktop. Uh, I'm a super forgetful person. If it was like a pretty important file, I would know, I would totally forget about it. So I know that should now be saved to my desktop. Um, and I do actually have the tutorial here. If you checked out the post, it shows you step by step. So essentially what we're doing is we're changing the color of a vehicle. Um, this one it actually shows you black. Uh, at the very bottom it'll show you various colors here. And we can change it to any other color with simply a click. So I'll show you that whole process. So we will be going through... Hello, hello? No, it's okay. Um, I'll kind of go step by step. And so that way it's a little bit easier to follow this tutorial if you're following along afterwards as well. So it says open your image in Photoshop, which I have saved to my desktop, and change it to something smaller than 8.5 by 11. So this is where I might clarify this a bit. I might say looking at that for a first time, uh, I don't find this to be super, or if find out if anybody around you might have questions about that. If that's not explicitly clear, it means I should have done a better job of that. So I'm just going to open up Photoshop, go File, Open, so you open up any file. I have it set to my desktop already, and I have car.png. Uh, sometimes you'll get a pop-up that says, would you like to change colors? I usually just tend to hit OK. And for this one, it's kind of interesting because you see a checkerboard background. And typically, when you see a checkerboard background, that means it's a different file type. This file type is actually called PNG, which means it doesn't have a background necessarily. If I were to put this on a website, let's say I had like a, a wood grain website, like the back of the desktop was wood grain. If I put this image on my website, it would actually show wood grain everywhere that you see checkerboard, right? So right through the windows, etc. So that can actually be a kind of cool look especially if you're doing something like a logo where you want parts of the background to show through. So keep that in mind when we're working on our websites. If you want something that shows the background through like this, as opposed to having like a big square, uh, it would be saved as a PNG file. So right off the bat, I know I'm in good spot here. Uh, so if I go back to the tutorial, it says open up the image and change it to something smaller than eight and a half by 11. The reason why I do that with students is to kind of get them in the right mind frame of putting things up online or printing them. Eight and a half by 11 is a standard piece of paper. So if you wanted to print these out, it would be as simple as hitting just print, right? So how to check that? Um, again, if you don't have your rulers here like I do, you can on a Mac hit Command R and that will show or hide the rulers. And again, your uh, version of Photoshop looks slightly different than mine. Uh, they haven't given me my copy yet. So I'm on one version previous to you, but really everything I'm doing should be the exact same. Uh, again, I'm going to right click on the ruler to change it, or just to double check to make sure it's in inches. Sometimes the default is centimeters. So how to do that, Command R so you see the rulers, and then physically right click on the ruler itself. And then it should give you a little drop down, just like this. Pixels, inches, centimeters, whatever. I, I always choose inches. I find students can relate best to inches. 
Um, when we get into working with websites, though, we will most likely want to work with uh, pixels because our, our website will be measured in pixels and it's a little bit easier to kind of make things work if we are always in the same like common denominator, uh, which would be pixels. So I'm going to keep that to inches and this is a little bit la larger than under 8.5 by 11. So typically I would want my biggest width to be 11, so that's easy to change. Uh, all I would do is go to image up here at the very top then image size and open that up. So this is another very important screen that you'll see used all the time. Um, one very important thing here is this constrain proportions button. I typically like to always have that selected which means uh, anytime I change one value it automatically changes the other to compensate. So for example, my width, I always take the largest number, which is my width in this case, change that to 11, and take a look at the height. It's automatically going to change as well. Okay, So it changed from 11 to 8.25, meaning it's not going to skew. It's not going to squish itself. right? Uh, resolution here, I think in the tutorial I said 150 pixels per inch. You can do 150 if you like. If you've already done that, fine. Don't worry about it. I'm going to change it to 72 pixels per inch. Yes? Um, our one doesn't have the constrained proportion. Oh, looks OK. So disregard that. That's something I didn't know about. Uh, yeah. It automatically does it? It does. Like, I typed in 11, and the other one changed? I tried to type in 8, and it switched to 12. Perfect. OK, that's good. So I think that's actually an improvement, um, because I found this to be quite uh, an area for uh, a difficult area for students to navigate. So yeah, it looks like that's an improvement. Uh, it's always good to, to kind of note those things if you see changes like that. I didn't even know about that, which is why it would be great if I had the same software as you guys. Uh, so yeah, as long as one your largest number is 11, the other one technically should be smaller than 8.5. So mine is. Um, and just another thing to note here, where it says resolution, uh, we had a few people uh, had some issues uploading their images last week, and it was because we found the resolution was either in pixels per centimeter, or it was a uh, much higher pixel image size. So sometimes if I find that students aren't able to upload, or you'll see that their files are very big, typically the first thing I do is go to this screen and double check resolution. So if a student is saying like, oh, like this is going really slow, or as a shortcut, so it's kind of hard to see on the right hand side here, it'll tell you the size of my image. So 3.52. If I see something really large, like 150 or something like that, I will know the student has something screwed up and it's always in this image size box. So always check that it's something inches, uh, 8.25 inches, 72 pixels per inch. And again, pixels per centimeters, sometimes is very confusing. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And you're going to see it kind of makes my box a little bit smaller. I can drag that out. I can zoom in a bit more. And I'm actually just using shortcuts for that. So Command plus and Command minus are shortcuts for zooming in and out. You are going to use those constantly. That's just like the last tutorial where we, we use the same hotkeys or same shortcuts. We're going to do the same thing. So Command minus to zoom out, Command plus to zoom in. And you're going to be doing that because we're going to be erasing a lot. So we've gone through that step. We've made it under 8.5 by 11. Now we're going into a new tool called the Rectangle Marquee Tool. And I find uh, things like whenever I name a tool to put it in like bold so that students know, okay, there's emphasis on that. I should kind of, maybe that's an important term. Or if you have a glossary up on your blog, that would be something I would say, hey, students, you are learning the rectangle marquee tool. Um, I always try to describe where it is or show a picture. This picture could be much more clear had I put like a little arrow, something like that. Uh, so essentially, I'm going to show you how to do this next step by doing it for you. So the rectangle marquee tool is second from the top. Remember, if we're ever not sure what a tool is, we can hover over it. Uh, rectangle marquee tool, like I said, second from the top. There is a little black triangle there, which means there's something else hiding underneath it. If I click and hold on it, 
you could see there's the elliptical marquee tool, single row, column. There's others, but all we're going to do is click on the rectangle marquee tool. And it says, make a rectangle over your entire vehicle. Essentially, any color, anything that needs to be changed in color, make sure it's within that square. So all I'm going to do is, I always kind of typically click up here, up in the top left-hand corner. It could even be outside of my document, right here. And just make sure every part of the color is in there. So like that. Let's say, for example, I missed the back bumper. Let's say I just did this. And I realized, oh crap, I should have included that. What you can do is just re-click it, or hit escape, or command Z. Oh. Uh, command D, sorry. Command D is a shortcut for deselect. So typically I would just hit, uh, or just click it again. You can click it as many times as you want, it's not going to do anything. Right, just like that. So I'm going to do it again, make sure I have all the color of the vehicle in a square, just like that. Uh, typically, also, I'll find students sometimes get uh, in trouble with certain buttons. Uh, if you see anything flashing on the screen, it means the rectangle marquee has selected something. And essentially, the rectangle marquee, what it does is it lets Photoshop know all we want to work on is what is ever inside that square. So I've seen, like, I've, I've come up to students' computers where, like, nothing seems to be working. And then all of a sudden, you'll see a tiny little flashing square in the bottom and then you can kind of figure it out. So uh, typically if you hit Command D, it will deselect your square and you can just go back to whatever you're doing. Uh, so the next step is crea uh, create a new layer. There is a shortcut for it, but there's also a, a handy little button on the top of the layer, sorry, on the bottom of the layers tab, which I'll show you. So my layers is right, are right here, and the garbage can is on the far right. The second from the right is new layer. So it should say layer one now, and it's important to know kind of how the layers work. Remember, we can lock layers if we don't want them touched, which I'm actually going to, this layer zero, my background layer or my image layer with my car, I'm going to lock that layer because I don't want to make any mistakes on it. I don't want to um, do anything to it that I don't want. So how to lock it is you click on the layer, blue lets you know it's selected, and then the little lock button. So the lock says, you know what, uh, we're, we can't do anything to that at all. Yep? It's not only draws the Hey. Oh, you can't lock it? It's not it's it's yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you open up a, a document and it brings it in as a background layer, it's already locked. So if it says background and you see it a little locked, then it's already locked for you. Don't worry about it. Okay. So again, very important that now that it's locked, I go back to my layer one because we're telling Photoshop we want to work on a new layer, layer one there. And it says color the layer. So color the layer by clicking the paint bucket tool, set to black, and fill the rectangle. Okay, I will show you that. And then it says to change the color mode. Sounds very complicated, but I'll show you step by step here. So another thing I dislike about Photoshop is it hides the uh, paint bucket tool. The paint bucket tool is actually hidden underneath this little square, which is called the gradient tool. That's why I always say it's really important to know what that little triangle means. So I'm going to click and hold on that gradient. And underneath, you'll see the, the paint bucket tool. Um, technically, this step can be done with multiple colors, but with an additional step. For ease of following along, I would say just choose black. Um, if you've never changed colors before, or if you look at your colors down here, and they're not black and white like mine, you're going to want to click on the top square. So that's right here. Uh, it says foreground color and background color. Whatever is on top, the foreground color, is the color you're actually working with. Uh, there's a couple shortcuts that will allow you to just fill it automatically, but I will show you those separately. So now that I have black selected, or if you, it's not black, say it was red, all you do is click on it, and it'll bring up this panel right here. 
and you can move to the bottom right or left hand corner it should give you black um, also kind of an importance aside to note when we're working with our website specifically you're gonna learn that colors have numbers and the internet because it basically works with uh, text it knows what colors to put in because of a color number and so for example I just happen to know that black the color number is actually six zeros or is that seven nope six so if I typed in six zeros or what is the color black in like internet language it's actually just six zeros um, so it's either it's it's a hex number um, great question I don't know Yes. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm sure it is. It has to be related. Uh, I do printing as well, and uh, yes, yeah, because you have your RGB, your CMYKs. I know there are different color values, but uh, I'm sure it would be. Um, yeah. So not super important to know right now, but once we get into building our websites, uh, that will be important because you will be setting colors for things by this number. Very easy to search for that as well. So now that I have black selected, I have my paint bucket tool selected, and I'm on the correct layer, I'm just going to click in the square. And remember what I said about rectangle marquee tool? It, it's telling Photoshop all we want to work on is what's in that square, right? Okay, so now it says to change the layer, uh, change the color mode to overlay. The color mode can be very... It's a new tool, it's something new that you probably have never seen before. Uh, so the, the color mode is right here. It's just above the layers. Mine says normal right now. But if I put that to overlay, you should be able to see through it, right? Um, I'll give you kind of another tip. I prefer to actually leave it normal and work with the opacity. Opacity, I find it's a little bit easier to work with because it's uh, easier to change as you're working. So what I did is I just left the color mode here to normal on the layer and right to the right of that is opacity. So, so opacity is like see-through, how, how much, uh, the higher the value, the higher the color concentration. So 100% pure black, if I put it to 50%, you should still be able to see some black, but you'll be able to see the image coming through underneath. So kind of turning it transparent. Zero is obviously nothing. The, the lower number you go, the less you can see. So I typically like to move it, this is going to be different with every person's image. I like to move it to the point where you can still see all, all of the details in the car, but when you erase it, you can still see that it's erasing. So for mine, in between 55 and 65 is kind of my magic number which probably would be a good number for you as well. Okay, and that, I put it actually in a tip. So now it says to erase and create a mask. Now we come to the eraser tool. Um, I find this is where students that are very lazy or have no patience, it becomes very, very evident. So if you've never used the erase, eraser tool, it's just above the last tool we used. Um, it is not hidden at all. It shouldn't be. I'm just going to click on that and you're going to find uh, some options up here that can control that. So uh, typically I tell students to use a hard edge brush. Um, with this little menu it can give us a variety of different things. We can erase in patterns. We can erase in uh, soft edge brushes which kind of fade the eraser in and out or we can use a hard edge brush. Uh, for this, it works much easier with a hard edge brush uh, because we want hard crisp lines. We don't want to have soft lines. It just will not look good. Um, right at the top here. So if you click eraser, at the top, this is where all the, uh, all the options associated with the tool are kind of hidden. So where it says 80 on mine, um, it's a little circle. I can change that by just clicking on it right here and what I typically tell students I'll just say uh, pick the one that looks like a, a really good circle and then if I go on my screen I can see a pretty big circle here 
And that is good for the roughing, but it's not really good for the fine detail work. So I'm going to show you another shortcut on your key, uh, your keypad that's going to really save you a ton of time. If you look to the right of the letter P, um, there's kind of a, a left bracket, and then to the right of that is a right bracket. Just like we used Command Plus and Minus to zoom in, this will make your tool. Oh, I have French keyboard. Oh, so. you know what? It's not doing mine either. Yeah, the square brackets uh, to the right and left of the P. If I click one or the other, it will make my little circle larger or smaller. So this becomes very handy. For example, let's say I want to erase this uh, headlight. Right, I'm on the right layer. Uh, if I have a big brush like this, it's not going to erase it. Right, it's going to make a mess. So I'm going to minimize it by using the left bracket. Left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it larger. So I'm going to make it just the right size that I can go in and do some erasing. And this is where the command plus and the command minus really help you out. Right, so command plus, I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit, and then I'm just gonna do a little erasing. Are you, do you have, uh, are you on the right layer with the layer unlocked? Yeah, so a uh, good thing to mention, uh, let's say, you know what, I'm doing the erasing right here, and uh, I need to move over to the side. So on a laptop, it's a little bit different because I can just move my fingers, but on the bottom, there's a little slider here, so I can keep zooming in or out, and I can use that little slider, and I can move this up or down as well. Um, but I'm going to just do a little bit of erasing because essentially what this is really good for is hand-eye coordination and uh, getting you to do a good job of erasing. You'll see here once I'm zooming in, it's starting to really pixelate. Okay, so that's okay. Um, it's not going to do anything wrong. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase every part of the black that is not the color of my car. Right? So for this one, I'm like in this wheel well, it's a little too dark for me to see how close I'm getting. So I'm going to, or sorry, it's a little too light. I'm going to brighten that up just a little bit. And another little tip I like to show students is where this was black before, I'm just going to put my opacity all the way back up. I can actually change that to a color and that might, uh, it might be a little bit easier to do. So I'll show you how to do that little tip. Um, again, all I would do is click a different color, whereas I had black before. I'm going to say, obviously, something different than the color of the car originally. Um, maybe something like this bright green. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool, and I'm going to just drop it on the car again. So now when I turn my opacity down, I can, and if I go in my wheel well, I can tell very easily what is and what is not the color of the car, right? It, it has a little bit more of a contrast being green. So I'm going to continue with mine green. I'm going to do the erasing. Then I'm going to show you how to change it back. So the next step in the tutorial is just do the erasing as much of the vehicle as you can. And you're going to end up like a mat with a mask just like this if I were doing the Jeep. So I'm going to do it extremely quickly just so that I can show you the next steps and you're going to want to use the, uh, the tools that you've learned, how to increase the size of a brush, decrease the size of a brush, uh, zoom in, zoom out, etc. Those will all be very useful tools. Undo is Command Z. Or you can go up to Edit and un like it'll go step backwards. You can do that as many times as you like. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Um, what? Where are you right now? Do you have your image in Photoshop? Okay. Do you have? Yep. Yeah, no. That's just because I have a PNG image. Depending on what image you selected, you don't need.
Okay, so this is typically where a student can really, depending on their techniques or how patient they are, they can pretty much finish this in a class or two. Uh, some of the common mistakes you see all the time are students using large brushes, just kind of like I did right now, where you can see the really bright red. That's a mistake. You don't have to go back. I'll show you how to fix those after. Um, but you, I, I pretty much do tell students to just undo it. So instead of kind of trying to erase everything in one click, do it in many clicks. So do a little section and unclick because that means if I had, let's say I erased the entire thing in one click, if I made a mistake and undid it, it would undo everything. Whereas if I did it in 100 clicks, it would just undo my last step, which would be exactly what I'm looking for. So like I said, I'm going to do a very quick hack job. Yours is going to be amazing in comparison. So it's just body paint that you're trying to keep, right? Just the body, yeah. So the only thing that should be colored, black or in my case green, is the body color of the car. So I tell students like uh, things like chrome, things like these windows here, um, that gets erased. If, if I zoom in, if you look at the uh, mirror here, there is a, a little light strip right here in the middle of the mirror, that gets erased too. That's not body color. And like in between the panels of the car? Like not necessarily that hardcore. So yeah, like you'd see the body lines, uh, for example, like this black line in the door, that w that's fine. But like this little light here, the side turning light, I would erase that, things like that. Basically anything that isn't the color of the car is best as you can do it. That being said, I'm going to complete my hack job you're going to see very quickly what is good and what is horrible. And don't worry, there's going to be a lot of time today to work on this. And a lot of time for me to help you if you are struggling or need help on anything at all. I'm here to help. Grills, chrome, headlights, any and all of that gets erased. How about interior? Yes, interior, if it isn't the body color. Is that a common problem? <laughs> My burden to bear. <laughs> um, if you look uh, just to the right of the letter P, the, bra the left bracket and the, s the right bracket will increase or decrease the size of your tool. And I would also suggest to zooming in and out of your picture just to make sure you're getting as close to the lines as possible. So what I'll do is I'll get you guys just to pause what you're doing and uh, I'll go through the next steps 
Uh, I promise not to lose you. You should be fine. I want to show you how to correct a few common mistakes and essentially complete every last part of this assignment. So let's say a student came to you with this. I could tell right away there's many, many mistakes, and I'll show you that and how to correct them. So the first thing, thing I technically would do is turn up the opacity. If I can still see the body color, I can say, you know what, uh, that was pretty bad. We might need to go and touch some of those up. So what I'll do um, is exactly the opposite of erasing. I'm going to add that color back into the car. So I'm going to paint it in. Here is where uh, a few students will have troubles because there's a few different brushes or a few different tools that look like a brush. Um, the one just above the eraser is it looks like a brush, but there's kind of like a little arrow towards it. So it's actually an art history brush. We don't, I've, I've very rarely ever used it in school, but uh, kind of right in the middle there, there is a paintbrush. And I can tell that it's a paintbrush because it says brush tool if I hover over it. And it has the same type of tool that we just used. Uh, instead of the eraser, I'm going, it's essentially painting. And so again, I want a hard edge brush. So I'm going to click the hard circle, click off there. And uh, I have my same color selected. Very important that you have the same color selected. So for example, mine is green. I should leave that green. If I wanted, if it was black or if I want to work in a standard color, I can just change that right now. I'll show you that. Actually, you know what? I'll leave that. So whereas I, ever I see this red, I can just paint it back. I'm going to paint right over the red. And that's an easy way to touch up little mistakes. Uh, I have quite a few. And again, the same rules apply to the tool. If I use the left bracket and right bracket, it's going to increase or decrease the size of the tool, just as it did with the eraser tool. And I'm going to zoom in and out. Oh, I can see that I made a few big mistakes up here. Again, just little touch-ups. The, I always tell students, the more work you do, making sure your eraser worked really well, the better and easier the next steps become. So I always get a, the students to kind of check each other's work and say, you know what, check this with the person next to you. If they can spot any color, make sure you change it. So let's say this is absolutely perfect. I cannot see any red. This is 100% looks fantastic to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this back to black. So I'm going to click on, if, if yours is black already, don't worry about it. But you do need to change the opacity back up to 100%. Uh, I am going to change it to black because it's not black. So I'm going to select black, hit OK. And then with my paint bucket tool, I'm just going to click anywhere on my green. And it should go black. Okay, And I can see here, if I zoom in, there's a couple spots in the interior that I missed because they are still green. So I can go back to my eraser tool and I can erase those. Okay, so there you go. You should have a big black mask. And if I turn the little eyeball off on my image layer, my bottom layer, it should kind of show you this. And what this is, is technically it's called a mask. We're essentially masking out the image. And if I change now the blending mode, the color mode to color, it's going to turn it black and white, but it's going to actually show the car details through. So I'm going to go to my color mode, oops, sorry, the blending mode that we talked about before, scroll down until you see color. And now it should turn my vehicle into a black vehicle. This is why I tell students do not use black silver or white because essentially I could just start the assignment right here. I wouldn't have had to do any of the erasing, any of the tools, which I think is the reason for this assignment. So I'll just kind of repeat that step again. Um, it was at normal. One of the problems I do see at this step is students forget to turn the opacity back up to 100%. So let's say the opacity was at 50%. And if I change the blending mode from normal to color, you'll see it doesn't really do anything. And then I'll just take a look, oh, your opacity is at 55%, turn that up, and it should turn it to a perfectly black vehicle, right? So grayscale, no color. All that blending mode did is actually remove the color. And because it's using my mask, 
uh, it's removing the color of anything that was black, right? And again, here I can tell I did some really sloppy work. So I can clean this up a bit. So again, with the eraser tool, making sure I'm on the right layer, I can just come in and do some erasing. Watch what happens if I erase too close to the body. It's going to go bright red. Okay, again, I can undo that by just hitting Command Z, or I can paint it black, just as I did before. I'm gonna show you that. So let's say I really screwed up here, I need to fix this. Um, making sure you're always on the right layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool, I'm going to make sure it's selected to black, and if it's the wrong one, say it's a spray paint brush, which is a soft edge brush, I'm gonna change it to a hard edge brush. Um, I can use those shortcuts on my keyboard, the left and right bracket to make it bigger or smaller. And I'm just going to paint that back in till I cannot see any of the red. And then zoom out. If that looks good, we're ready to proceed. Again, mine looks like garbage. Yours is going to look so much better. I'm just trying to go through the steps to show you. Okay. Um, so now we're supposed to duplicate the layer. We're, um, I, w I really like to rename layers always. Uh, the more organized you are, typically with better assignments, the better off you'll be. Even though that this one is still fairly simple, you can get uh, caught up if you don't name things properly. So I'm going to rename this layer one to mask, and it says to duplicate it. So how to duplicate it, I'm gonna click on that mask layer, right click on it, um, there's two ways to do it, and I show you both in the instructions. The right click is probably easier, but I'll show you both of the ways. So again, this mask layer, if I right click on it, there's an option here to duplicate the layer. Okay, and hit OK. Now you see mask copy. Uh, the other one is to just drag it. Instead of dragging it to the garbage, you would drag it to that new layer button, the, the second from the garbage. That's another shortcut. Um, and then now it says uh, to rename that layer color. Also important to note spelling of things. So for example, I wrote color, the American version. Color in Canada has a U. So I'm going to rename that first where it says mask copy to color, Canadian color. Okay. Awesome. And then we are going to change the color. So we now pick whatever color we want to make the car. Obviously, if the car was red to begin with, we're not going to end up with a red color. I want you to change it to something else. So let's say uh, I want to change it to blue. We could click on where we had the black. We could pick any color we want. And if we select one color and don't love it, we can change it again. Uh, another helpful thing is up top here, you might see colors. You can pick colors from here, or you can click swatches, and it will give you a, a list of pre-made colors. Let's say I love this baby blue. I think that would look perfect. All I'm going to do is select baby blue. I am on my new layer, my color layer. I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool, and I'm just going to click on my car. And there you go. Uh, some might have it showing that uh, on the color layer it looks good. I find if this is where I have students play around with some of these color modes, overlay tends to look really good as well. Uh, in the tutorial, step six, it actually says to change it to soft light. So soft light sometimes will change it a little bit. I get students to play with the different color modes and see what they do. You'll see some really... Um, We'll change it like this doesn't look right at all. Color darken, lighten. So some of this just looks like junk. But you'll find a few that look really good. Typically that's overlay, soft light, and color. So overlay looks pretty good. And again, I could tell that I made a few mistakes. And I could touch them up in this layer as well. But let's say I didn't do a good enough job on my mask layer when I duplicated it. So if I were to touch it up, I would have to touch up both layers. And I'll show you what that means. Um, so up here, let's grab my eraser tool. And again, I'm on my color layer. I'm going to erase, but you see it's only erasing that blue color, like right here. I actually have to go into my mask layer and erase my mask layer as well. So right here, you can see I er erased my black, but the blue is still up top because it's a copy, right? So I have to 
delete on both those layers. So it's really important to spend the time erasing and making sure you have a good base um, in the first place. So let's say this is absolutely perfect. I love it. I could not have done a better job. I'm ready to save it. And I always suggest that students save it as a PSD, which is a Photoshop document, so that you can come in and work on it later, as well as save for web and device, which I guess you guys don't have in the new version of Photoshop. But I'll, I'll show you both of those right now. So let's say, you know what, I'm going to take a break, which we actually are pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to just save it as a PSD. So I'll hit Save As. Um, always a good idea to rename things. So I know this one is called Colorization. I'll call it Colorization. The format is Photoshop, so it's a PSD, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. Perfect. Hit OK. That way I know I can come back to it. I can share that with another person. All my layers are going to be there. You should be able to see these three layers. And if, I, it, if it was a more complex tutorial, and let's say I had to hand it in to a teacher or one to share it with other students, I would share the PSDs so that I could check their work, check all the layers. Uh, that way you can kind of gain an appreciation for what actually happened there. So now that it's saved as a PSD, let's say I'm done and I want to put it up on my blog, you guys would go save as, change the format from Photoshop to JPEG, hit save, and this is where we get those funky numbers like we did last time. Um, right off the bat, mine says 234. Again, anything under 500 will upload to your website fairly easily, but I like to shoot for a number right around 100. So I'm going to move this slider till this number becomes right around 100. And right off the bat there, I hit 101. That's perfect. I hit OK, and there we go. You'll notice though, because I have a checkerboard background right here, doesn't mean I have a checkerboard background on my JPEG. It actually makes it a white background. That's what I was saying about the .png type files. That .png is a special type of file, which means anything in the background is transparent. A JPEG can't do that, right? So right off the bat, there's a pretty important distinction between file types. And uh, like I said, it may not mean nothing, it may not mean anything to you right now, but when we come to our web design and web building, uh, that will become very important. So I would upload this to the blog and we would be happy. So I will end the recording right